The Los Angeles Lakers just traded for Patrick Beverly from the Utah Jazz for Talon Horton Tucker and Stanley Johnson. Was this a good move? Hello, I'm Fletcher Armbrus, and welcome to NBA Take. On today's show, we'll break down some key moves made this offseason. We'll talk about the number two overall picks in this year's draft, Chet Holmgren, and how much time he's expected to miss for the 2022-2023 NBA season. We'll also discuss Kevin Durant's trade request and whether or not the Nets made a good choice. And coming off a championship, how good will the Warriors be? And finally, after drafting Paolo Bancaro, number one overall in the draft, how good does he actually make the magic? All this and more on this episode of NBA Take. In the NBA, some teams want young players, some teams want to do whatever to win, and some teams are in between. With the addition of Patrick Beverly, the Lakers want to win now. Do the Lakers have what it takes to make the playoffs or even win the championship? Joining us to talk about the Lakers are co-hosts and NBA fans, TJ Armbrus and Keegan Duncan. Thank you for being on the show. How much better does Patrick Beverly make the Lakers? Um, you know, he got that lot down defense, so. I feel like he's a good asset to the team for real. You know, I think he he definitely I don't know how how much better he makes them with their makeup right now. You know, with Russell Westbrook still on the team. Um, I mean Patrick Beverly definitely has a very good, strong role with the team and you know, his def as you said, defense is like his calling card. Um, and you know, he, he all the last few teams he's been on, he's been that veteran presence that I'm not sure that the Lakers particularly need from him. Um, so, you know, does he make them better? I guess the easy answer is maybe. What do you think? Well, I think for Patrick Beverly to make the Lakers better, they need to move Westbrook. Yeah. Because Westbrook took the ball out of LeBron James and Anthony Davis's hands. But Patrick Beverly doesn't necessarily need the ball. It's true. So I think Patrick Beverly makes the Lakers better because their best players can have the ball more often. So you, you think just in the fact because because Russell, I mean, he's ball dominant, takes so much of the ball right. that just having, but what if Russell's still there? If he's still there, I think the Lakers are better, but I don't think it's, I don't think they meet their full potential with Westbrook in the starting lineup at least. Do you think they're better? I mean, with him, with Russell being there, like, it kind of messes up the chemistry in a way because he, you know what I'm saying, like you said, he's more of a dominant ball having player. Mm -hmm. But, like, Patrick Beverly, he's more on the defense end, so, like, he can take the ball and then pass it to, say, LeBron or AD, and then they can help it out more. Yeah, I mean, I think for the Lakers to be really good, LeBron and AD have to have, to have the ball all the time. And with Russell Westbrook on the team, that's been difficult for them to do. And, you know, injuries and other things have had a big, a big deal in that. But, you know, Russell and LeBron are both, I mean, they both got to bring the ball up every time for the team to be the most successful. And you're right that Patrick Beverly, that's just maybe not his role. He's not a super strong bringing the ball up um, type of player. He can do it. I mean, he plays the point, but he, he definitely doesn't have to have it. He, he's like the point. He's like defensive point guard. Mm -hmm. You know, he, yeah. he, 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 he'll lock down. 
most of the def most of the point guards in the league. Um, so yeah, I think I think that's I think he, he he makes them better. He does. So if the Lakers are healthy, how good can they be? I mean, in my opinion, they could be a championship team. Definitely with Pat Beverly and all of them being healthy, and without Westbrook in the West. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think you're right. Maybe Westbrook doesn't um, fit, but, you know, he might be there. So uh, it's hard to say how good the Lakers are going to be this year because, you know, the makeup of the team doesn't look particularly good besides the fact that you have two of the best players in the game in LeBron James and, and Anthony Davis. But the key is what, what you said, I think, if healthy. Like that's the key is they got to be healthy and LeBron James isn't getting any younger. You know he's been he's been able to escape most of these years without any major injuries and been able to continue to play. Um, but as you get older, it's harder to do that. And if you do have minor injuries, it's harder to recover from those. And Anthony Davis hasn't really proven that he can stay healthy for an NBA season yet. Um, he's proven that he's one of the best players in the game when healthy. But the key is he's got to stay healthy. What do you think? So I think. If they're healthy and everyone meets expectations, they play to what they they can play to. I think they're a three to five seed in mm -hmm. the West. Even with Westbrook. Mm -hmm. With Westbrook, if he's coming off the bench and not necessarily finishing the game with everyone, then I think yes. But if he's starting alongside Davis, LeBron, and Patrick Beverly, I think they're not quite as good just because yeah. th he takes the ball. I, I think they have a, a hard time being in the top four I do this year just because even with Patrick Beverly and LeBron and AD being the focus, just their depth doesn't seem to be super great this year. I, I think they'll have a hard time being in that top four just because it's, you know, it's, the West is tough. Um, I definitely could see them making the playoffs and being in the bottom four and maybe avoiding the play-in, but, I mean, the play-in a big possibility for them, too. Do you yeah. agree? I mean, yeah, most definitely. There's a lot of good hoopers coming out of the West. And, you know what I'm saying? With them being healthy, that has a big determination on what seed they're going to be, too. Yeah, and I expect LeBron to be healthy. He always is healthy. Um, it comes down to AD. So. I think, realistically, they'll be – um, a playing team or a sixth seed, okay. just because injuries are a part of basketball. Yeah. So, who should the Lakers start this year? Honestly, in my opinion, they should trade Westbrook, and they need to be healthy. Uh, Brian and AD, they need to be healthy. Yeah. And definitely Pat Beverly. They could have Pat Beverly probably run shooting guard or a point guard, definitely. Yeah, yeah, I think they should start Patrick Beverly at the one. Mm -hmm. Austin Reeves at the two because yeah. he brings shooting yeah. and stuff. I agree. LeBron at the three, Davis at the four, and Thomas Bryant at the five. I think Thomas Bryant is pretty underrated. He's been injured and on the Wizards. So I think he And he's can, a pretty good three-point shooter. Right. But the key is he has to stay healthy. He only played 27 games last season. So if he can stay healthy, he can really help the Lakers out. <laughs> that, that's always the key. It seems yeah. like that's the key every year right. like for the healthers, yeah. for the Lakers, if they stay healthy. That's pr right. it's a problem, though, every year when you have that if as a part of your statement, mm -hmm. if, if they stay healthy. Um, I mean, yeah, I think that starting lineup is, is, is good for them. And I think you're right. I think Russ, I mean, he's got to be traded it, yeah. I but, just, uh, but I don't know that they will. I don't know that anybody wants necessarily him, yeah. wants him to be on their team um, with their makeups now. So it, it, it would be really hard. And, you know, the Lakers want some. He's, he's $40 million a year. They can't, you know, you can't yeah, just can. trade him for nobody. You have to can't be able to make him. salaries match. And so they're going to want picks and stuff for him that I don't think they're going to be able to get. And the Lakers are going to have to probably pay part of his salary. I mean, there's a lot of yeah. ifs in there when it comes to, um, but in regards to who they should start, I think you're spot on with your, your five. I think that's probably your five best players when they get rid of Westbrook. And even if they don't, then maybe West, Westbrook comes off the bench. But will he want to do that? Right. No. 
Yeah. I, I don't think he'll want to do that either. Yeah. No. All right, so hold that thought. Chet Holmgren was diagnosed with Lindfrank injury after playing a pro-am game and is expected to miss the whole 2022-2023 NBA season. Our take when we return. Chet Holmgren was drafted second overall by the, to the Oklahoma City Thunder after an injury during a pro-am game. He's expected to miss the entire NBA season. What does this mean for Holmgren's career in the Oklahoma City Thunder going forward? Joining us are co-hosts and NBA fans TJ Armbrus and Keegan Duncan. What do you think about that? I think that I'm not quite sure how much it will affect the Thunder if he's going to make them much better just because the Thunder are not that great. Um, I think it definitely hurts them not having a great starting center, young at that. Um, but what do you think? I mean, I was really looking forward to watching Chet play, you know what I'm saying? Him being that high of a pick. So he had a lot of hype behind his name, but you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, he got injured, so we couldn't really see what he – well, we knew he had potential, but we just couldn't see him play to his furthest, you know what I'm saying, or what he could be. I still have this vision, you know, I, a lot of people watched, you know, I don't know if it was on YouTube or what, but him early when he was in high school and he mm -hmm. crosses up uh, uh, Curry. Curry and takes him to the ho hoop and dunks and, like, he's got a lot of hype. You're right. right. He's got a lot of hype to his name. Um, you know, and I think you're right, Fletcher, that Oklahoma City's probably not going to be great this year. Um, they keep getting picks, and they have picks for the next 10 years, 100,000 of them, it seems like. Um, but, you know, their, their team isn't super deep. They're really young. They don't have a whole lot of talent, and his injury definitely hurts him um, considerably. Um, uh, you know, and I guess the question is going to be, what's he going to be when he comes back? You never know with young players. And he's, he's pretty, pretty yeah. thin, pretty... You know, he doesn't have a whole lot of muscle on him. How is he going to be able to respond? Um, what do you think? Yeah, I really hope he plays. Injuries are terrible, but they're a part of the game. I think he, with the, with the training staff, he could come back and be better and meet his full potential. Realistically, though, his frame concerns me because it would be much harder for him to come back just because he's so long and lanky Yeah. that... Just don't know how, yeah. how uh, he can do it. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point. Like the training, he's never had training staffs like this. Even you know, even in college, they have really good training staffs, but it's nothing like the pros that have multiple doctors that are working mm -hmm. for them all the time, and that's their sole job is to work for the team and to keep them healthy and the million trainers. And so, I mean, he's got the potential to come back and yeah. and, and and maybe giving him a year probably gonna be better than what he was when yeah. he got injured. Uh, and, and, and you know a lifting program, eating program, he, he might put on some weight and all of that not having to play this year might might make him better to come back, really, um, make his frame a little bit bigger and stronger and, and to be around the team for a year and kind of see what it's like to be a pro. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, example, 
um, from the Denver Nuggets. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. was hurt, you know, his first year. He had a back surgery, which is a little bit different than a foot, but he was around the team for an entire year. So when he came in and played his second year, which was his rookie year, he looked pretty good. He, yeah. he was bigger because he was pretty skinny too. I mean, he still is, but he, he was bigger because he got to lift and be part of that training staff and got to be around the team a lot more and, and knew what it was like to be a pro in his first year playing, and that might really help out Chet. Yeah, so what should the Thunder do with some of their picks? I, th I believe they should package some of them in hopes of getting a star who can help lead the Thunder. An yeah. older, older star who can start and lead them. I mean, I definitely see where you're coming from because I feel like they need, there's a lot of young players and they definitely need like a, you know what I'm saying, a player that's a leader that they can mm -hmm. follow behind. Yeah. And the the issue maybe is, do you want to go to the Thunder? I yeah. mean, if you're a star in the league, no one wants to be in the um, you know, especially especially this year, Chet, who's supposed to be one of their right. better players, is out mm -hmm. for the entire year. I mean, obviously they got Shea. We'll talk about him in a little bit, but like, you, do do you want to go to a team that's probably not going to be very good this year? I mean, right. So I see the vision. Like, if I'm an older star, but not too old, where I can be around for like five more years and be good, I can see the vision of the Thunder. So, do you think the Thunder will win the finals in five years? Somewhere between that? Realistically, no. I don't <laughs> see them winning no title, no championship, <laughs> no time soon, honestly. Right. Yeah, I mean, the NBA seems like right now, especially, is such a win now. Like, these GMs, like he's got trades all, and, and, but to have a five-year plan in the NBA, the problem is if you're a GM, it's going to be somebody else by that time is probably going to be the GM because right. you're probably going to be fired by then. So, um, so within the next five years, I think that's really tough. Maybe if Chet comes in and is just like comes back and is incredible, and they're able to hang on to Shea, and they're able to get another star and really build through the draft some a, a young core. I mean, it, it can happen, but nobody really seems to have much patience in the NBA. So, you know, people like they'll panic and they'll make some trades and they'll get some role players, but those players are only going to be there for a year and then they're going to be gone. And so do I see them winning a ring in the next five? I don't. I don't. Yeah, I think the only chance they have is – they draft well, their players develop, they're able to keep all of their players, their good ones, and they're able to trade for an older star. And I think that's the only chance they have, unless they sign a good free agent, but and I just wouldn't see Oklahoma City, they're not a big, they're not a big market. market. Yeah. So I just, I don't see myself as an old NBA star wanting to go there. Yeah. I'd want to go to a team that can win now. Which. But I guess another thing, you, you, what do you think about Shea? I think Shea is good. I think he should make the All-Star game. I'm not quite sure if he will, just because he's on the Thunder, who are not very good. They're not expected to be good this season. Cause, and a lot of people might not be watching the Thunder. But I think he should make the All-Star game. But I can see why he won't. Yeah, I, I, think, he's, I think he's one of the most underrated players in the league, to be honest with you. I think Shea is an extremely talented player. Um, I think as he continues, his shooting improves, it seems like a little bit. Every year he gets to be a little bit better shooter. You know, he's a long, big point guard. Um, you know, if, if you're that star, then I think you like the idea of, of being with him but it might not be for a year or two at this point, and will Shea stick around that long? Because I agree, I think he has the potential to be an all-star caliber player. I mean, he is really, really, really good. And um, But are they gonna be able to stick to the plan? That's always, always the issue. Can they stick to the plan? Yep, all right, so we have time for. Okay. Kevin Durant requested a trade from the Brooklyn Nets in June but has recently decided to stay with the net in the hopes of winning a championship. What does this mean for Kevin Durant and the Brooklyn Nets? Our take when we return.
After Kevin Durant requested a trade, all the attention was on him and the teams with the possibility of acquiring him. Since then, Durant and the Nets have decided to work out their differences for a chance at a ring. What does this mean for the future of Durant and the Nets? With us are co-hosts and NBA fans TJ Armbrust and Keegan Duncan. Thank you for being here. No. Thank you. So, do you think the Nets will finish over 500 for the season? In other words, will they have a, more wins than losses? No. I mean, I could kind of see them. Well, let me take that back. Actually, yes, I think they will. You know what I'm saying? If Kevin Durant stays, you know what I'm saying? Kyrie, they kind of been together for a decent amount of time, so they have a good chemistry, and I feel like they can work the ball together and get up a good amount of points for the team. I, I think that Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irvin are maybe two of the top five players in the NBA talent-wise. Talent-wise. I mean, those two are so incredibly talented. I'm not saying they're the top five in the top five players, but talent-wise, they are. But I think what gets in the, the – they get in their own way, I think, many times. That they're, I don't know if it's their ego or what it may be. Um, you know, I, I, I think they'll hover around 500. I think – Brooklyn is a really deep team. They got a lot of talent. Like they're they're a pretty good team after those two players. They still got lots of talent on that team. But those two seem to like suck the life. I mean, they really suck because they have them for a good portion, especially the second half of the season when you thought they're going to blast off because these guys and I know Kevin Durant got hurt late in the season, but even before that, like they never really made a lot of traction. Um so I I think they're going to hover around that 500 area, and where that is in the east, I don't know. I said I think they're going to be right there or a little over just because just Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving combined puts them as a good team. However, I'm just not quite sure how well the Nets will be able to play together with the egos of Kyrie and KD could get in the way and – kind of make their team not quite as good as they can be. Yeah, and that definitely leads into the next part of that. Are they a top team in the East? I mean, no. on paper, they are. Yeah, on, on paper, pa they might be, but realistically, no, they're not. But that also doesn't, like, will they make the playoffs? I, I, I think make if the they're a 500 team, yeah. they make the playoffs. And now when they get into the playoffs, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Game. It's a different ball game, and Kevin Durant and Kyrie could take over, and they could win you some playoff series. So they might not be necessarily standings-wise a top team in the East, but having the type of players of that caliber, I mean, it makes you pretty good. It gives you a chance all the time. So, you know, and it doesn't have to be – it could be just one. Like Kyrie might take over one game and win a couple games by himself, and the same thing with Durant. So do you think that the, the playoffs are a different ball game with them? I'm not quite sure. From what we saw last year, a good defensive team with the Boston Celtics was able to lock them up and sweep the Nets when a lot of teams picked the Nets to win. So I think the regular season, they need to play. They can't miss games. They can build up their chemistry with the rest of their players. If not, then I just don't see them going far. They might win one series, but I don't see them winning two. Yeah. And, you know, the thing about Kyrie is, and Kevin Durant, that love for the game is just too strong for that well-being, you know what I'm saying? The ego is kind of blasted through the roof, but, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Kyrie, yeah. he's a really good ball handling player, and he knows how to, you know what I'm saying, break some ankles and get to, you know what I'm saying, rack and get, get a couple hook, buckets. Yeah. yeah. And same thing with uh, Kevin Durant. You know what I'm saying? If you have Kyrie, you know what I'm saying, he can break a player or two, you know what I'm saying? He can get Kevin Durant wide open in the corner mm -hmm. and pass it out to him, and he can get the three. I've seen so many things about Kyrie that like it's just it's almost disheartening because I really wanted to like Kyrie my whole my whole because he came from Duke I'm a Duke fan I've really yeah. wanted to like Kyrie but he he makes it really hard to sometimes you know um, I mean last year you know he only played half the season because of his vaccination status and yeah. that is what it is but he's also wrote into he wanted to have written into a new contract that he only has to play 65 games yeah. and like. That doesn't sit well with me as a fan. Like I, I don't think that that should be a part. That that shouldn't be right. And you know, how does that sit with your teammates? He doesn't want to be around for half of the or quarter of the games from them, 
he's going to make them have to play on their own. And I've heard some comments that he potentially may have made, and I don't know. You never know what you, you hear right. these days about how he made some comments about his, his head coach, Steve Nash, and that's kind of why they uh, didn't like each other. And and Kevin Durant's been injured. Like I'm right. concerned more about him. Like yeah. when he's playing, he Kevin Durant's play, yeah. one of the top three players in the league. So what, what does Ben what, what does Ben Simmons factor into the Nets? Because we've just been talking about KD and Kyrie, but they have Ben Simmons. Very that's true. good defensive. He, unfortunately, he's easy to forget because we haven't right. seen him play in yeah, a while. Yeah, it's been a little minute since he played. Um, what do you think about Ben? I mean, I think Ben is a real good paint player. You know, he can get the ball and he can body someone and get to the rack and get a bucket. Like, But the thing is, he had played in a minute, so we still don't know if he still has it or not, too. Right. The when question is, what's Ben Simmons' position? <laughs> so, he can, yeah, he's doing I think it. Kyrie should be at the one and KD should be at the three or the four. I think Ben Simmons should be at the four. So that means KD should play at the three. So I think Ben Simmons, he's one of the best defensive players in the league. I think he can really add. Do you think add, he still is? Like after being out for two years, do you think he steps right in and is one of the top defensive Not right players? in, but I think he'll fit in and he'll be able to help the Nets because KD and Kyrie aren't known for their defense. <laughs> That's true. And yeah, Ben true. Simmons doesn't necessarily need the ball. So... KD and Kyrie can just have the ball. He can be a great ball handler to get the ball to them, but he doesn't need to be the one to take the shots. So Again, the NBA is such about fit. Like, I, I, The question is, uh, where, do, where does he really fit? You know, you say he's a four. That's generally like the power forward, you know, back yeah. in the day. They kind of play positionless these days, so it's not as much of it like it used to be if you were the power forward. You'd play in the paint and you body people up, and, you know, that was Charles Barkley and those types of players. In today's game, that's not necessarily the same. I mean, LeBron James is best at the four, and he's handling the ball all yeah. the time. Right. Um, ben Simmons is – he's used to being a point guard. You yeah. know, he, he controlled the ball when, when he was there. So uh, uh, how he's going to fit, and is he going to be happy playing the four and not touching the ball much and just playing defense? You know, is he mm -hmm. going to be happy doing that? I mean, personally, I don't think so. But in a way, I kind of see where you're coming from without playing the defense perspective because after he's been gone so long, does he, can he still keep up the par with the other players without getting blown by and someone else getting to the wreck? Yeah. I mean, he is. if he is playing the four, as you say, he's going to be guarding yeah. players that are more Bigger, like yeah. his size that he should be, should be able to stay with. But... Um, I, I just I'm, I'm not sold on the fit of that team with him with the other two. Yeah, I agree, but I think Ben Simmons could be better just because all the attention isn't on him like it was in Philly. He's I would say most people say he's the third best player. Yeah, I mean I would on agree the Nets. With that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So with the atten the attention on off of, is off of him onto the other players. So I think he could really fly under the radar and be a really good player this season. Can he shoot? That's the, he doesn't I mean, need to shoot. Uh, he does some, though. I mean, because yeah. otherwise, but otherwise you sag all your defense in and you're just, you're playing four on five and he's just not a part of it. So, I mean, at some point he's got to make some shots. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Right. Hold that thought. Okay. The Golden State Warriors just won the NBA championship over the Boston Celtics. Many fans did not expect the Warriors to be this good coming into the season, so the Warriors defied all the odds. The Warriors have a chance to repeat our take when we return.
Warriors star players were plagued with injuries since the 2019 NBA Finals. Many expected the Warriors' reign to be over. The Warriors made moves, drafted well, and got healthy to allow them to return and win the NBA Finals. How good will the Warriors be this coming season? With us to give us their take is co-hosts and NBA fans TJ Ombris and Keegan Duncan. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Yep. So, do you think Steph Curry will have an MVP-like season? Um, it's, it's very possible, but you know what I'm saying, if Steph grows older, he still knows how to play the game good, but also can he still keep up to what he was doing in his younger seasons? That's just my question and opinion. I, I don't think he needs to have an MVP-like season for them to be really good. Yeah. I mean, I think that they're pretty deep and they have a lot of experience now after winning the championship last year that he doesn't necessarily need to average, you know, 28 points a game and be like 10 assists or hover. Right. Like he, he can, you know, he can get other people involved, and, and and he's got a really keen ability that when it's time to take over, he's able to just yeah. just step up and do it. Like there's not many players that can flip the switch mm -hmm. quite like Curry can. Right. I think I don't think he will, just because he has so many other good players around him. I think he'll definitely be a top ten, top fifteen player this season. However, I just don't see him needing to be as good as an MVP. Do you think, you know, all, all these people that talk about sports all the time, if the Warriors have the top record, even if he's not leading the top in scoring or not score, you know, is round around on his averages, maybe even a little lower, do you think he still is a part of the MVP discussion? Yes, he is. The, the, the Golden State has been such a hot spot the last few years. Mm -hmm. So I think with so much attention on him and him leading the Warriors to the one seat, I think that will make him the MVP. Even if other players have better seasons, they might go under the radar just because of how much focus is on the Warriors. So you think if, if, if the Warriors are number one, that he, he, he has a really, really high shot of If winning. he averages 25 plus points, and, and it's plays one. the whole season, then yes, even though I might not agree that he should be the MVP, I think he'll win the award if the Warriors are that good. Do you think? I mean, I see Jordan Poole being the MVP, honestly, because last season, he really showed us a lot we didn't spit that much from. I mean, he, Jordan, Poole, uh, Jordan Poole's really good. Fletcher doesn't think he'll be. I don't. I, I don't, I don't think why. he'll be the MVP either. But, but I mean, you, you never know. Players like sometimes they they have something that happens to them, and they can just be a totally different player from one year to the next. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think Jordan. I think Jordan Poole uh, was lightning in a bottle last year, especially during the playoffs. It was something that they needed. He got really hot. Um, playing the Nuggets, um, and I mean they really dominated them, and uh, he he was a big part of that because you know they had some injuries at that time. Steph right. wasn't even really playing. I just don't think Jordan Poole's going to have the opportunity this year to put up anywhere. I mean, I think he might win Six Man of the Year if he if he's coming off the bench. You know, I think he has potential for that, but. Um, what do you think about Jordan Poole? I think he was in over his head last season. He got really hot. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he'll be as good, but I think he can be a very good secondary player, like below the star level, like superstar all-star level, but not quite a role player, you know? Uh, you think he'll be on, like, he won't start, right? Would you agree with that? If I was the Warriors, I would not start him, but I could see why they start him just to have all the talent. I mean, after cause after Curry got back in the playoffs, he went to the bench. Like he okay. didn't the last couple series, he didn't play no. nearly as much. Uh, and I know they lost some people, so his his role might have increased. Um, but I, I think I think when you say he was playing over his head, yeah, he got crazy hot. And it made him look like Steph Curry, which I don't think he's there yet. I think in a couple of years, if he continues to progress like he did in the last couple of years, he's got potential to be All Star worthy, uh, you know. And um, as Curry gets older and Thompson get older, 
and you know they're still going to kind of baby Thompson because of his past injuries. That he's going to he's going to have an opportunity to be out there and play quite a bit. Right. Um, yeah, I agree. But you know, I just don't see him averaging 18 points again yeah. this season. I wouldn't be surprised if we averaged 15 or 16, but I think 18 might be a little high, especially if he starts. Yeah. So how good is Dray how valuable is Draymond to other teams? Because he seems to be very valuable to the Warriors. Um, I don't know, man. He's a good – I feel like he's a good team player because he knows how to assist people and get assisted in a way, so – he, he, you know, he was a defensive player of the year last year. I mean, his defense is so invaluable for Golden State. Um, I mean, and and you watch this year. I, he, I think he is probably the most. Steph Curry, maybe the, if they're the number one seed, Steph Curry may win the MVP. But the most valuable player on that team is Draymond Green, in my opinion, because when and I. It's, it kills me to say this because I'm not a huge Draymond fan, but but he, they're they're a much 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 better team with him on the court. Um, he makes their defense their defense isn't good without him. I mean, he makes their defense one of the top five defenses in the league by himself, just by his presence on the court. And then he's able to get Curry and other guys shots with his screening on offense and his passing. He's one of the best passing. I would say big man. He's only like six six, but like he's one of the best passing forwards in, in the league. He really is. Like it's really amazing because, and he's the type of guy which he has. He's one of the only people. I mean, he had a triple double mm -hmm. and didn't score ten points. You know, so I mean, he's just he he's yeah, he's really good. He's really good. Yeah, I think he's very valuable to the Warriors. Just as valuable, more valuable than a Clay Thompson and a Jordan Poole. Not quite as valuable as Steph Curry, just because of what Steph Curry brings to the table. To other teams, I couldn't see him being as valuable, just because the, the, when the Warrior, when Steph Curry and Clay Thompson were injured a couple years ago, Draymond Green had a down year. Yeah. I think he's really good when the war, other players around him are really good. When they're not, he's not quite as good just because he can't help them out quite as much. Well, because he can stop them on defense, even with those other guys, but then, then your scoring comes into right, it. because he can't score. He can't score, and he can't be the go-to scorer. Yeah. That's why you need a Steph and a Clay. When Clay came back, that was big for them last year. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you think Clay will ever be as good as he was before his injuries? Um, I don't think he needs to be. I think if he can be a good defender... And a really good shooter, yeah. they're set. Yeah. Do you agree? Um, well, Fletcher said, I don't really think he's going to be as good as he was before his injury. But like you said, you don't really need to be. If he, if he can lock down on defense, then that's it. And if he can hit his mid-range and threes, that'd be fine. Yeah. All right, hold that thought. The Orlando Magic drafted Paulo Bencaro with the number one overall pick. The Magic already had a solid young core. Does Ben Carroll allow the Magic to be somewhat competitive? Our take when we return. You'll never know My strength, my pain, the pressure The Orlando Magic were awarded the number one overall pick this offseason. 
They selected Ford out of Duke, Paulo Bancaro. Magic are expected to start Colt Anthony, Jalen Suggs, Franz Wagner, Paulo Bancaro, and Wendell Carter Jr. Could the Magic make some noise this season? With us to give us their take is co-hosts and NBA fans TJ Ombres and Keegan Duncan. Thank you for being here. Thanks. Thank you. So, will Paulo Bancaro have a Rookie of the Year type season? You think he'll win Rookie of the Year? Um, if he can play above par, then most definitely. But I don't know, honestly. I really don't. I mean, I don't know that he's the most talented player in out of that draft class, especially with Chet mm-hmm. injured and not going to play this year. I mean, there's good players, and there's always somebody, you know, that's the 16th or 17th pick that comes and like, oh, my gosh, they're so much better than we thought they were going to be. Um, but generally, those top picks are playing with teams that aren't necessarily very good. They're not very cheap. And, you know, those 17th, 18th, 19th picks are playing on teams that potentially were playoff teams. So right. it, it makes them, if they get find a role, it makes them – more valuable. So, will, will he? I, I do. I think he will win the rookie of the year. I think he'll definitely be top three. He could be kind of like Cade Cunningham last year. Cade Cunningham got, he was forgotten just because the other rookies in his class were so good, even though he was great. I, I'm not quite he sure. Was in Detroit, you think? Right. <laughs> I'm not quite sure that'll be the case just because I think the Magic will have a solid season just because they have good young players. And I think he'll definitely be top three. Top five for sure, but you never know. Yeah, I mean, he, he's got an NBA-ready body. Yeah. He's sort of like, you know, some of those other guys that came in, like LeBron. Even though LeBron came just out of high school, he came into the NBA, and he looked like an NBA player where, you know, you look at some of these guys uh, that are really skinny, Michael Porter Jr., um, Brandon Ingram, some of those guys. I mean, they just – they don't – look like they have an NBA body because they're so slight, you know, they're so skinny, but they, through the years, they build that up and they get stronger. And even Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant yeah. still doesn't look like he has an NBA. he's so thin and tall, but I mean, he, he, he's proven that he has, but Bancaro's big, like he's a big dude and he can mm-hmm. shoot and he can get to the basket. And, um, uh, you know, I, I think, I think he, he has a chance to be the real deal in, in Orlando. And like you said, they, they have a fairly young team. And if he can, you know, kind of stabilize that and give them a, a, a go-to type of scorer, then it, it makes them a lot better. So what's the ceiling for the Magic? I think they're playing team six seed at the absolute best. I just think they have so many good players. But they will need to play together, you know. I mean, I don't even know how to say that's a good question. Not a, not a good question, but that's a good analysis. But I don't know, that's a good one. You kind of got me a lot of words for that one. Um, I, I, I think if everything hits wonderfully for them right. and everybody stays healthy and everybody progresses as players because like you said they are young right. then they potentially can get to the play-in but realistically I think there's no way I just don't think there's any way that they're remotely good enough to get there I mean I think one of their better underrated players Gary Harris um, who's one of their defensive specialists and and a really good shooter he just got injured and is going to be out for the season he he tore his ACL or whatever and I think stuff like that really hurts a young team because he's a veteran guy that's been around in the NBA for a while been on some teams um, and kind of knows how things and is able to teach a lot of those younger players Um, and I I don't know they have a whole lot of that right now Um, so I I really don't think that they're going to be able to be do you you I mean, does it have to be perfect? What happens if it's not no, perfect? It ha- Where are they? A, they're a 9 or 10 seed, maybe, maybe miss the play-in. Um, if, realistically, but if everything goes great, I think they're a top, t- top play-in team or maybe even the six seed. Wow. So if you were the GM of the Magic, would you start Cole Anthony or Marco Fultz if healthy? I think that's a no-brainer. I think Cole Anthony has proven yeah. it the last few years, yeah. don't you think? Yeah. I mean, Cole can be a very dominant player sometimes. And so can uh, Markel, but, like, 
it kind of comes down to like who can really score those points and how good can they score them? Can they be consistent or can they be like every now and then right. really come down yeah. to that? I, I would mean, love to see Marco Fultz get a shot. Yeah. He didn't really have a shot on the Sixers just because of all his injuries. I, I'm really hoping he can stay healthy so he can show us what he's really made of. However, I still believe they should start Cole Anthony just because Cole Anthony has, he played most of last season, you know, and I think he can lead the Magic. I think you use the word that yeah. is the key, consistency. Who, who's who's going to consistently bring it the most? Personally, I, I wouldn't be surprised if if both of them start. I mean, you can put both of them on the court together, like Cole Anthony play the point so guard. So who would come off the bench? Jalen Suggs? Because I don't think they can put Franz Wagner, Paolo, or Wendell Carter on the bench. I think. I think one of them might might go to the bench. I mean, I really because if Markel Fultz, which I think he has the op, he has the potential to be one of the top players on that team. He's got lots of skill. You know, he went through a rough stop in in Philly. He he it was tough on him. Um, but when he came back for Orlando, I think he played pretty well. I think he surprised a lot of people with his play. Cole Anthony is definitely the more consistent of the two. And if you have to choose, Cole Anthony gets the start, in my opinion, because mm-hmm. he shows it, even though he went to UNC, but we're not going to hold that against him. Um, but he, he did. He really he, he was the real deal for them. He won some games for him, hitting the last-second shots. I think the other players look at him as a leader yeah. in that yeah. locker room, even though he is young. Um, and, and young in the sense that he hasn't played a long time in the lead. I don't think he's really. I think he's like 26 or somewhere in there. I can't remember exactly, but um, he, he's a he's he's going to be really good, and he's only going to get better. But who's got the most upside of the two? Who can potentially be that lightning in the bottle type of player and take off and lead a team? I think Fultz has that opportunity, maybe better than Anthony does. Would you agree with that? Yeah, kind of. Um, I think Markel really needs to figure out his jump shot just because it's essential <laughs> mm-hmm. for a guard to yeah. have his jump shot. If he can do that, I think he very well could start because Cole Anthony could be perfect to lead your bench just because he scores a bunch of points and some benches struggle with that. Sort of like Tyler Hero this season yeah. where he finished most of the games but he came off the bench so he could play with the bench unit. Between the three of those, though, if you you put in Suggs into the group, where do you think he fits? Because I think Suggs, Fultz, and Anthony potential, I mean, that three-guard lineup could be pretty deadly, don't you think? I mean, kind of like a, a, a Warriors, not not nearly as yeah. good right. type yet, but don't you think that they have that potential? No. No, why not? I just, I just don't see them being able to play together that well. Yeah. Okay. If they have some really good coaching – and they really work together, I think they can, but right now I just don't see them playing together. Yeah. And I think that they're so young, their chemistry isn't all the way there. Right. But like if they do stay together in the long run, they definitely – I'm not going to say they could be the Warriors potential, but like they could be Walmart Warriors. In a way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Um, so – because I, I, I see six players being really, really good for them in Fultz, Anthony, and then Suggs, and then your forwards, you know, your three forwards that you mentioned, Wagner, uh, Carter, and uh, Bancaro. So, you know, which of those five fit together the best out of the six is potentially who's going to get right. there. All right. Thank you for being here. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Great talk. That's all we have time for today's show. If you have any comments or suggestions for our show, you can contact us at the address on your screen or email us at learn.tv at lcsd.k12.sc.us. You can also see our content on vimeo.com backslash learn TV. Thank you for watching this episode of NBA Take, and we hope you join us next time. Mm